Hi, check out what I found in the dumpster. It's a Synology DS415 Plus 4 bay NAS drive. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. I've never found, well, I found a NAS in the dumpster before with like some old crusty uh, thing, but this one still has the protective film on the front and it looks like it hasn't been used at all. There's absolutely no dust inside uh, the fans in there. It looks like it's virtually never been, well, uh, not used for any extended period of uh, time at all. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the uh, power adapter and it does need a 100 watt uh, four pin uh, jobby down here and they actually run about well, at least 80 bucks something but anyway I've uh, already got a DS418 uh, the uh, power supply is the same so I can actually uh, power this uh, thing up so it is an older model I believe I think it's discontinued now but it's uh, worth like seven you can still buy it for like seven eight hundred Australian bucks absolutely brilliant what's the catch well I posted in a tweet a photo of this thing you got to follow me on Twitter because that's where I post all my uh, dumpster photos and find some that uh, a lot of them don't even make it uh, to a video like this one and ordinarily I wouldn't have done a video on this but yeah it was uh, it's almost too good to be true because uh, somebody on Twitter thank you very much uh, pointed out that uh, there's a famous uh, known issue with this. It's not just uh, Synology drives, but actually uh, the Intel um, Atom C2000 processor used in this thing, there's a famous bug in this, and we'll take a look at the uh, details of that, that actually uh, caused this thing to fail. And ironically, based on my last video, it was found in a shopping trolley. So yeah, if you haven't watched that video, definitely check it out. Oh, and by the way, no, it doesn't uh, come with any uh, drives, but it has all the holders in it. And like, seriously, it looks like this thing's never been used. So anyway, let's, let's power this sucker up with the uh, my other power supply. Power it on. And unfortunately, it does have this known problem with this uh, DS415 Plus, which runs the Atom uh, C2, or a variant of the Atom uh, C2000 processor, and the the blue uh, power light here is not supposed to be blinking like that, it's supposed to be solid, and all the drive lights are not supposed to be solid orange like this. So it looks like it has this uh, fault, this bug that causes uh, degradation, apparently, on the um, Atom CPU in this thing. But uh, rather than just uh, toss this thing out, I thought we'd have a go because there is actually a fix for this thing. By the way, yes, I have put uh, one hard drive in there and it makes uh, no difference. And that is likely uh, why they uh, tossed this thing out. Maybe they had it running for a little while and it failed because as I said, like it's very clean. So this is an indication that it's just not booting up uh, at all. It's not going through the boot processor and eventually if I just leave it for a while, it will actually just switch off. By the way, to get this thing open is a real bugger um these two plastic clips in here this metal frame actually goes under that and you've got to get your fingers up under there and like pull it out and but once you do it does actually come apart like that but yeah it's, it's not obvious and well inside not a huge amount on this side i like the extender board for all the sata connectors sata and uh power of course and that just goes into a focus you bastard that just plugs into a uh, right angle connector on the main board and yeah, Bob's your uncle so that's really neat and tidy then you've got uh, just an IO uh, board at the back for your uh, ethernets and your USBs. Um, but the main board is in here that should do it for those playing along at home there's your back plane board and I love using uh, PCI connectors for uh, board to board interconnects I've used them for uh, you know test interfaces and all sorts of things over the years they're, they're just cheap and got tons of contacts and they're really handy and reliable so that whole board's going to lift out now except for some shielding tape on there but apart from that ta-da we're in like Flynn there you go there's our main Synology processor board that's going to be our culprit the uh, Atom processor and once again this is not uh, Synology's uh, fault it's a systemic uh, fault in the die of the um, in the design, inherently in the design of the um, Atom C2000 processor and all variants of it. So hundreds of manufacturers would have been uh, bitten by this Intel 
uh, C2000 bug, unfortunately. Anyway, because um, this is otherwise a very nice RAID drive. Well, uh, a lot of people will go, oh, Synology crap, should have left it in the dumpster. Whatever. This looks like it's going to be fairly reliable. These electros here, these are uh, all uh, polymer ones. Polly put the kettle on. You can tell they're not a wet electrolyte type because they don't have your typical uh, cross arrangement uh, pressure vent in the top. Oh, they had to have a tan on them. I did. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> They're okay these days, but you know, they've, they've got a reputation. Model number for those playing along at home and uh, copyright 2014. Anyway, interesting that they got the uh, firmware ROM uh, flash up on, uh, ROM, old school, up on the uh, little daughter board there. Would they do that for reasons of uh, production efficiency, perhaps? Because these things aren't particularly cheap, so they're not shaving off every dollar of these things. They aren't sold into, you know, the really high-volume uh, consumer market. They're more uh, business-oriented, you know, at like 700 bucks retail for this thing or whatever, um, 800 bucks Aussie. Um, yeah, you know, you can afford to do that little sort of thing. It may, because uh, you can have a mass uh, programmer, for example, maybe faster to actually program these off-board in a big uh, custom-designed uh, gang programmer than it is to, you know, have it, um, do it via the uh, USB port or whatever, uh, you know, Ethernet port or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, 2014 uh, date code. Five plus years old, but anyway, it's, it's like I bought one. So, according to the interwebs, the fix is to put a 100 ohm resistor between pin 1 and pin 6 there, and that's it, apparently. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm curious to know where, what that's actually doing and where that goes, but, yeah, I don't like the odds of being able to uh, trace this unless we had a schematic. Because, you know, this is like a 8-layer board, 10-layer board, something like that. Pin 6 here, this actually buggers off over to here, and there's a 0-ohm jumper R. Uh, 356 there, I'm not sure where that goes, but it also goes to this unpopulated resistor and it buggers off under here, drops down a via, and I think it goes off somewhere over under the, uh, to the processor, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to follow the money too much, so, uh, it's not a huge amount we can, uh, actually... Uh, glean from looking at that, unfortunately, unless we really spent a long time at it. Couldn't be bothered. And unfortunately, Googling doesn't find any info on the uh, pinout for J3, what that is or whatever, um, and of course, no schematics. But if you do happen to have that information, please leave it in the comments down below. Well, that's not pretty, is it? But, oh, I've actually run out of 100 ohm axial resistors. Do you believe it? There was nothing left in my drawer. So I had to put two 51 ohms in series. So <laughs> we've got 102 ohms. Oh, gosh darn it. Well, it's not going to work now. <coughs> anyway, let's put this back together and uh, power it up. And blinkity blink, but aha, uh -huh, look at this. The orange lights aren't on. So I've installed one hard drive just to uh, make it do something, but it's certainly changed, so I'm going to leave that for a bit. Aha, look at this. Look, status. Blinking orange light, disc one, green, solid blue. So it just took like a minute to boot there. And winner, winner, chicken dinner. That has fixed it. Likely to work, as a lot of people have done this uh, modification, and they said, yep, it got it back up and running after it uh, died. But there is something about, apparently, degradation of the chip, perhaps. But uh, Synology have said they actually extended the warranty product and others that use the uh, C2000 uh, chipset, and uh, in full knowledge that, hey, these things, they reckon, that's their engineering analysis anyway, is that uh, these, you know, these chips uh, don't die. Well, at least not for the warranty uh, term that they, they extended it for anyway. So, winner, winner, chicken dinner. There it is. This station, it found a DS415 plus. So we can connect into that end user license agreement. Yeah, blah, blah. And we should be in like Flynn. And that is the local address, 192.168.20.30. Your mileage may vary. Set up, there you go. So, yeah, it knows that we're booting this for the first time. Install the latest DSM for security fixes. Uh, disk station manager, yep, we can install that now. So all data on hard disk will be removed. Installing disk station manager. 
10 minutes come back but anyway it's it's working it's it's fine there's nothing wrong with it so i expect yeah you put in all your four discs and you set them up in whatever configuration you want bob's your uncle and there you have it we are good to go system health good everything's uh hunky dory uptime three minutes <laughs> it's lasted three minutes it's gonna last three years right mm, i don't know uh no whackers and um, we've got the one used drive so now if you wanted to use it you'd put in uh your uh, however configure your drives however you want it's fine so practically a brand new ds415 four drive uh nas in the dumpster well it was faulty because it did have this uh c2000 uh intel atom bug but it's fixed and it's raring to go should i trust it hmm Okay, so what I'm going to do is just uh, probe the signal here on pin 6. Pin 2 is actually ground. I'm using my uh, low inductance uh, probe here because we've actually got, as you'll see, a 25 meg signal. Look at that. And that's a bit how you're doing. That's not my probe uh, doing all that funny business in there. That is uh, the actual signal so that's that's the clock and there you have it it's pretty poor stuff and uh yeah my probe is compensated everything's hunky-dory so it looks like they are potentially like shorting out two clocks here and wow that's got to be over the low threshold at that point so that's like for like your cmos levels i don't really like that sort of like uh porch uh, so to speak in there that's like a classic when you have like two signals shorted together that's not good at all this is after the mod of course apparently the output of the clock fails or deteriorates on uh the chip and that's the actual uh silicon fault it's a failure mode apparently the output driver sort of maybe deteriorates over time due to whatever process um you know they're they're using uh, in on the die there and so that's a really awful clock i don't like that at all but it's working and pin number one it looks like it is just the rail i couldn't uh, measure that before but it looks like yep one two three point three volts so it's pretty solid but you can see some uh noise on that and that's just the noise superimposed on that so yeah you know that's perfectly fine nothing wrong with that so they're just basically um it's a low impedance pull up a hundred ohm pull up resistor uh to the, to the rail on that clock so it's a bit how you're doing but it does the job and it's better than like a maybe a better solution than like having to run mod wires and cut tracks and all that sort of jazz let's just check that i pulled the resistor so this is the original failed configuration and oh there it is yeah look at that wow let me capture that so that's actually uh, the same frequency. So this is really fascinating. It's like, it, it's about ground there. You can see that the ground is like in the center of that waveform. So it's almost as if like this is like an input that's picking up noise, like it's, or it's a high impedance, you know, tri-state output or something like that, or it's an output driver uh, that has failed, which I think some people have uh, speculated for this thing, a clock output, because it is coming from that 100 ohm resistor. So but why our 25, why it comes good when we simply pull that up to 3.3 volts? I don't know. If that clock is coming directly from the chip and simply pulling it up, hard pulling it up with 100 ohms solves the problem, then, oh man, that's dodgy as. Um, but like I said, it works. But this, if anyone knows the exact details of, uh, you know, the failure mechanism of here, and if we can hopefully get the uh, schematic, it's rather puzzling. Anyway, when you pull it up, it the clock comes good. When you have no pull up, it's bad. It's not like it was originally floating. It's failed. I mean, you know, this was a working design, and it just fails because of this known problem on the chip. So the output driver is failing, but you pull it high, hard pull it high, and it works. Well, okay.
So yeah, apparently this was a big deal in uh, February 2017 and Intel Atom C2000 bug is killing products from multiple manufacturers. As I said, it's nothing to do with Synology. Everyone was uh, impacted and the problem is the uh, SOC, which is the system on chip, the actual um, C2000 processor, the uh, LPC clock out zero and or LPC clock out one uh, pins, uh, low, that's part of the low pin count uh, a bus you'd have to go into the topology of the c2000 processor to know what that is i'm sure you know intel designers out there know what uh, i'm talking about anyway it may stop functioning it just may stop functioning. Um, if the LPC clock stop functioning, the system will no longer be able to boot. It depends on how the system is uh, designed, of course. some I'm sure some systems weren't actually affected. Anyway, um, uh, that was... Uh, did, ND, did Intel use NDAs to squash reporting of this? Anyway, I, I have no idea. Anyway, a week later, uh, Synology announced a product status update um, and the 415 Plus was one of the, as of today, all of our products use this component are performing in line with Synology's quality standards, blah, 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 testament to our confidence in the reliability. We're extending the warranty on the products utilizing this specific component by an additional year. So it's gonna last at least a year, according to Synology. Wow. Well, okay. And Nantech have a great uh, write-up on this. I'll link all, all these down below for those playing along at home. Uh, Ryan Smith, great uh, write-up here. This was February 8th, uh, 2017. So this is not a new thing, but anyway, well, just discover things in the dumpster, don't I? Um, and it, it, we won't go into huge details, but we'll actually search the data sheet for the LPC uh, clock out pin because it generates a well in this case 20 measured 25 megahertz uh signal that then can power other stuff inside your product some you know boot rom and all sorts you know boot functionality and all sorts of uh things like that here you go it tells you along with legacy io devices the second most common device to hang off the lpc is the boot rom bias owing to the fact that it's a simple device that needs little bandwidth and this is where the c2000 floor truly rears its i'm gonna add ugly head is that yes in this particular case it looks like that's how the design of the Synology NAS is happening. They're using the uh, this low pin count bus to interface with the external uh, boot ROM. And well, by doing that, and tons of other manufacturers doing that, um, it's come a gutsa and they've failed unfortunately due to some sort of degradation of the silicon it's weird but it does happen here it is early circuit degradation and this is actually from the intel errata from because they have to release errata and this is quite common go look at any complex microcontroller or cpu from any manufacturer and you'll find often pages of uh, things that simply just don't work um and they they just advertise this feature and they go oh sorry no serial port 2 no that doesn't work sorry in these versions of silicon sorry how bad and here it is here's the specification update here and we can have a look uh february 20 it's you know it's had lots of changes over the years but the one we're interested in is system may experience inability to boot or may cease operation you think <laughs> The system may experience inability to boot, blah, blah, blah. The LPC will stop functioning and no longer be able to boot. And they don't offer things why. And then you can go down to the summary table to see which uh, steppings of the silicon are affected. Number nine down here. Look, uh, B0 and C0 steppings of uh, the diet. No fix. We, we just, sorry, don't have a fix for all these things. All these problems. Sorry, we just don't have a fix. And this is not just an Intel thing. It happens to practically every uh, manufacturer. These modern processors and micros are so complex and they copy them from other designs they copy elements from it and yeah they can simulate until the cows come home and they can test their dyes until the cows come home but until it gets out there and designers use it do we find and report bugs like I've, I think I've mentioned this before, I used to pick 24F uh, series chip once and I couldn't figure out why my serial port wasn't walking, working. And sure enough, I checked the latest errata for the chip and buried right down the bottom like this. It, you know, it said something along the lines of, oh, sorry, the serial port two just doesn't work. Uh, and on serial port one, we swapped the pins. We got that, we goofed that up. So, you know, it was like no fix and oh, here's a fix. And then I had to put mod, chop up my circuit, put mod wires in to make the damn serial port work again. Anyway, yeah, these things happen. And of course, if you go over to the EV blog forum, <laughs> 
It's got everything. The EV blog. If you're not on the EV blog forum, seriously, it's the world's best um, electronics forum. Absolutely. Like, everything's on there. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, Intel Atom C2000 failures back in uh, 2017. Uh, Bison posted this and, and all sorts of issues. And somebody talked about, um, sure enough, the Synology DS415 box died. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> needed to do the work around so yeah right so we go over to the data sheet over here and we search for lpc clock out zero there it is and frequency are 25 megahertz it looks like it is a fixed 25 megahertz uh, provided to devices requ requiring lpc clock so it's just a internal clock generated from uh, you know, the main uh processor clock whether or not it's it's phase synchronous well it <laughs> It is internally, but whether or not that's important. So you could potentially get around this fault, even if this pull up didn't work, by putting in, like having a little mod board with your own 25 megahertz oscillator and then powering and then using that to power whatever boot circuitry ROMs or whatever uh, uh, legacy uh, bus devices you've got powered on there. But as I said, uh, the synchronization could be a problem. So, but you could also have clock sync as well. So it, it's possible even if this pull up resistor fix didn't do it so this could still potentially be fixed in products if you haven't had enough incentive to do so you could design a little mod board i've done videos on designing mod boards and they could you could potentially have that with a little oscillator and some uh, clock sync circuitry i would imagine and then lpc host signals the uh, same no, 33 megahertz huh okay so it might be the lpc serves as a pci to isa bridge oops sorry my screen capture was way off there i'm not Dumbass Dave. Okay. Yeah, professional YouTuber. Sure. And it can support up to two loads here. It's a 3.3 uh, signal. So, you know, it's obviously just like a standard totem pole driver output. Why this particular one is affected, I don't know. You'd have to talk to one of the, um, you know, silicon designers to uh, know exactly what's going on there. There you go. That's interesting fix and uh what should i do with this should i actually go out and spend 80 bucks on a power adapter and then uh also i've got to fill it up with hard drives geez uh, you know i think you'd, to fill it up with uh to match my other one i'd have to fill this up with like eight nine hundred dollars worth of hard drives i've got four uh six gig nas uh hard drives i think they're uh, western digital reds or something um you know to fill that up and get a duplicate mirror uh, drive. I could have them in different locations and back it up. Um, it could be potentially be a cheaper backup solution than what I use at the moment. I actually uh, back up my entire RAID drive to uh, Backblaze, which is an online cloud uh, service provider, and it's all up there. So, you know, and, and that's actually quite expensive to back up that amount of data. So, anyway, should I trust this thing or not? Please leave it in the comments down below if you've got any experience or seen any other stories about people apply this fix and, well, they've come a gutter, you know, six or 12 months later. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit dodgy, but anyway. And, and if you know if Synology actually do this fix or did this fix, because they, um, I think they still sold this unit after they knew about this problem so and apparently they would um yeah sell you a, a good version of it a fixed version so anyway let us know what you think <laughs> if you enjoyed that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss it down below and over on the forum and subscribe to my library channel i'm by the time this video goes up i'm probably going to hit 10,000 subscribers it's insane catch you next time